Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for joining us. It's so great to see you all and welcome to Draw This In Your Style. I hope you all are having a wonderful Thursday so far. It's so good to see you. Hey, Gareth, Deep, Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, today we are joined by the wonderful uh, Daily Christine. Today is day two of our Draw This In Your Style. How are you doing today, Christine? I'm good, Cody. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing great. It's so good to have you again. Um, yeah, so if you guys are unfamiliar with Christine's work, we will be showing that to you in just a second. But before we do that, I'm going to explain to you if you've never been to Draw This In Your Style, what it is exactly. Um, so basically, Draw This In Your Style is when an illustrator will create a specific illustration and post it online, and uh, they will invite everyone and anyone to recreate that exact illustration in their own artistic style. So here on this show, we do the same thing, but with a twist. Um, where uh, I have a guest on every other week and we, before the stream, will pick a theme and then do illustrations before the stream and then swap them and then draw each other's on stream. Um, so yeah, I hope you all are doing great today and hey designs, <laughs> welcome Flynn, welcome, hi. So good to see you. Hi Julie, good to see you guys from Instagram. It's so cool to see you coming over. Um, yeah, so let's uh, head over to uh, Christine's portfolio so she can kind of just give you guys a little bit of an intro of who she is and the kind of art that she makes. Thanks, Cody. Um, thanks again for having me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Christine. Um, I go by to Daily Christine online. And um, yeah, so... I really love children's illustrations and my work is really inspired by um, earthy tone colors, um, very kid-like um, stories that um, come from my personal um, stories and what I'm going through. And um, yeah, I love trying to evoke a sense of adventure and home and um, coziness in what I illustrate. And, and I look forward to illustrating Cody's um, Brody Senior Style today. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I just love your work, Christine. It's so cute. I love your little characters and everything. Um, it, yeah, it's just so wonderful. And all of your green tones um, that you use, I'm a really big fan of too. Hi, Rin. Oh, welcome you. back. Yeah, of course. Hi, Rin. <laughs> Uh, Danielle, hello, Elodie, welcome back, you guys. Good to see you for day two also. Um, so let's hop over to our artwork so we can check out um, what we're working on today. So we um, finished our sketches offline yesterday. We worked on them yesterday for the first part. And now we are going to be adding color today. So yeah, um, so this is the sketch that I'm working on. I'm on the left, Christine is on the right over there. And um, I'll show you guys the original illustrations too. So this is Christine's Draw This In Your Style that I am recreating. And this one here is mine that Christine is recreating. Uh, Danielle says, exciting, excited to see the coloring process today. Yes, um, Christine got a head start on her clouds and they look so great so far. Um, what kind of, yeah, what kind of brush did you use on the clouds? Um, we're a big fans of Kyle here. <laughs> so Kyle Webster was actually just on during the stream right before us. Yeah. <laughs> we're using one of his um, drawing um pencils here called nice. the drawing box yeah cool i really love it how about you cody where did you leave off yes from yesterday um so i haven't started my coloring yet i normally don't really um 
plan my coloring ahead of time. Um, yeah. most, most of the time I will just kind of figure it out as I go. And I also have my color swatches here that I picked mm-hmm. from, um, all of my artwork pretty much is done with a combination of these colors here. Um, yeah. so I just kind of experiment as I go a lot of the time. That's not really me too, but that takes hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't really do that on stream all the time. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I better get a, um, a little bit of planning done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Teresa in chat, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, so, uh, says, drawing along with you today. Oh, that's so awesome. I can't wait to see Yay. your work. Yes. Oh, speaking of which, you guys, um, if you would like to recreate either of our pieces, um, feel free to do so. You can post it on Instagram with the hashtag Adobe Live. D-T-I-Y-S, or you can post it on the Photoshop Discord in the channel, um, draw this in your style, and we will be able to see them there. And um, then we will, at the end of the stream, be able to show off some of your entries. So stick around for that. So we can, you guys can check out some new artists that are in the community. Yeah, so the brush that I use, I use Kyle's brushes also. Shout out to Kyle <laughs> Webster. You can get his brushes for free if you have a CC sub, by the way. Um, I love Kyle Webster's brushes. Um, the main one that I use for coloring here that I'm using mm-hmm. right now is called Conte Crayon. Um, yeah, it's got, it's just got like a chalky crayon texture to it. Um, yeah. You can find it in the Mega Pack. Um, oh. yeah. And that's pretty much the only coloring brush that I use actually now. Cause, um, I mostly do flat colors. So I just kind of like add in my texture as I go. Um, yeah. it just kind of gives it a, a crayon texture. Ooh, the big, a Cody secret. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've always wondered what was his signature brush that you used. <laughs> oh, really? That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, it's a Kyle Webster one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I use his watercolor brushes sometimes too. Um, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. His watercolor brushes are great. Uh, Slim Man, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So do you have any kind of, um, you said before you didn't really, you don't really normally plan your coloring. So yeah. do, you, you, do you just kind of like pick and choose as you go? Do you work from a color palette or anything? Um, yeah, good question. Normally I I try to stick within the brand colors. <laughs> right. <laughs> the people are aware of. Same. But yeah, yeah. So I love to just play around with it, but um and see what feels right Mm -hmm. yeah how about you um yeah i mean over the years i've i've changed up like i just showed off my color palette that i that i do i i save my swatches so they're easy easy to access in photoshop Good idea (laughs) yeah i didn't used to do that i just did that i think last year when i did my drawtober list actually that was the first time that i ever saved my swatches yeah and it's been yeah a huge um, time saver for me. It's it's really yeah. helpful. Yeah, must be. And you can have um, swatches in Fresco too. Um, you can if you save if you save your swatches in Photoshop, you can import them into Fresco. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, really helpful. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you to. Um the background first type or the character <laughs> coloring the character first I, I see that you do the character first yeah I definitely yeah. do that's funny I've never noticed that before um yeah yeah I I kind of I'm one of those artists that kind of just like moves around the the painting a lot I don't really stick in mm. one spot for too long but I that's yeah I, I do stay I do start with the characters <laughs> yeah 
does it help you does it help guide you about the whole like color scheme for the entire piece i think so um yeah. okay. i think so because the the focal point is the characters a lot of the time so that's true yeah um, that is true yeah figuring out the colors for the characters kind of helps me figure out um the rest of the palette mm, i agree Um, uh, Sleeman says, a uh, simple question. What is the best brush to create female hair? Um, to be honest, I really don't know. Um, I'm probably not the best person to ask that. I bet, I bet Sam Peterson might know because he does a lot of concept art. Um, so our, not to put him on the spot or anything. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, like I said, uh, a little bit ago, I only use this brush, um, and my artwork isn't necessarily very, um, realistic. I don't have a lot of realism to my work. So when I do long hair, a lot of the time it's very blocky. Um, mm. it's very just blocky like this. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't, I personally don't really use a brush that would be good for hair on a daily basis. Um, but somebody else in chat might know. I'd love to know as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vanessa says, do this, do the swatches in Adobe capture. So you don't need to import to fresco. I don't mind importing to fresco. Um, I just mm. like, I have all of my files saved on an external hard drive, like just in case. Um, and you know what, to be completely honest, I kind of forget that for us, that Adobe capture exists sometimes, but it is really useful. So what are you working on right now, Christine? You start with the uh, background normally, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I, I kind of play around and see what I feel like. And this time I, I really wanted to try and get the background mm -hmm. done first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a sense of fluffiness in these clouds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it does feel really fluffy. It looks like cotton candy. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> That's always what you want with your clouds, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Andrew. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Hi. <laughs> also, if you guys are over on YouTube, feel free to come over to Behance because that is where I am reading the chat. Um, so if you have a question for me or Christine, or you just want to say hi, come on over to Behance so we can actually um, see your message because we're not monitoring the chat over there. Um, so yeah, just go come over to behance.net slash Adobe Live and you'll be able to say hey to us. I noticed that um, when I'm working on my own, I tend to bounce around my canvas a lot, but when I'm working on stream, mm -hmm. I stay in the same spot for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't know why. <laughs> Does it just help you focus? On maybe. Like both things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just because I'm multitasking and I'm, yeah. like, <laughs> I'm just thinking about other things, so. Uh, Sam Peterson, our mod, says, uh, yeah, the texture on those clouds looks great. I never paint oh. clouds, even though, even though, even with how cool they are, I need to change that. Yes, you oh. do, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> clouds can be so fun. Um, cumulonimbus clouds, the big fluffy clouds, those are my yeah. favorite. <laughs> oh, I've never heard a specific yeah, that's for the, a cloud. Is the scientific term for the big fluffy oh, clouds. Oh, cool. Yeah. You learn something new every day. Has <laughs> <laughs> Sam suggested any brushes for hair yet? <laughs> 
I have not seen Sam <laughs> wink wink. <laughs> wink wink is not sharing any brushes in chat yet. <laughs> he probably he probably doesn't have any names on hand. I don't want to put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard to remember all the names of brushes. Let me tell that you. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Especially, I only stick to a few. <laughs> yeah. Especially with Adobe, <laughs> with what they offer. <laughs> yeah, there's thousands of Kyle brushes available. There's a lot. Have you ever tried making your own brushes, Cody? I have not, actually. Oh. Um, because I've been using Kyle br Kyle's brushes for so long. I think I've been using Kyle's brushes for probably like eight years now at this point. Um, wow. Yeah. I randomly found his brushes on Tumblr way back in the day. No way. Um, yeah. And I've just, and because I just like his textures, I've just never tried to experiment with making my own brush before. I probably could make my own personal texture. Um, yeah. You know, like uh, maybe similar to a chalky texture or something like that. I really like gouache textures too. So yeah. I've considered working with, those kinds of brushes also but um yeah i've never i've never made a brush before has anyone in chat ever made a uh their own custom brush before is it is it hard have you ever made one before christine no oh i've seen from videos that <laughs> it looks easy but <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it's not as easy as it looks <laughs> yeah would you ever consider start doing yours maybe your own ones? Yeah, yeah maybe Ooh, first one here. <laughs> you got so much of his um the froggy done already. Yeah, it, it goes pretty fast when you're only using one, one brush and That's true. Um, and just flat colors too. Just kind yeah. of, it's basically like coloring in a coloring book. That's kind of what That's I've true. <laughs> narrowed my coloring process down to. Um, let's see. Rin says, I have not, but I would love to learn how to one day. Yes, for sure. <laughs> um, Danielle says, I've tested it in Photoshop, but, um, I've never used them before. So, oh, so you've made brushes, but you've never really used them on your work. Um, uh, Sleeman says, I created a bunch, um, and it was very easy to do, but I've never used it. <laughs> Hey, oh, Annika. Hey, Annika, welcome. Christine Hi. was just talking about you before we, before we went live. She was in your stream earlier. Yeah. Hi, Annika. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Elodie says, I've made one very useful stamp brush with my signature. Oh, oh that's a really good yes. idea. <laughs> wow. I, I've never thought about doing that before. Neither. I, usually when I have my signature or like my, my little like at watermark, I just yeah. have it in a separate file. <clears throat> I have it written out and, and I, and I, and then I drag the file into my artwork. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I've never thought about making it a brush before. That's such yeah. a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Cody's mind just blew, says Urkama in chat. Yes, it, it really did. <laughs> uh, Annika, I've been seeing your um, like Halloween artwork that you've been doing on Instagram. It looks really cool. Um, I'm loving your, your designs that you're doing for Inktober this year. Really, really cool. Also, don't forget to follow Annika because she has really great artwork. <laughs> okay, so I have the majority of the frog done. When I take the sketch off, it's very scary because he doesn't have any eyes yet. But. Yeah. <laughs> 
but um, he is just about done here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Picking off the line works always a scary part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I notice as well that oh, you don't really add too much line line art to your like final artwork, or do you do like really subtle ones that you can't see? Um, yeah, I mostly just use lines to add like details. Like here, mm. I'll, I'll like I'll start adding lines to um, the clothing here in a minute. Um, yeah. but I don't I know I don't really ever do like outlines. Mm. Um, uh, I um, rely really heavily on checking my values to make sure mm. that um, my colors are well separated with a lot of contrast. Um, yeah. So here we can see a, a black and white version of my illustration. Um, mm. And so we can check our values. So if we had contrast issues here, um, it would be hard to see each separate color um, mm -hmm. but having the separate, having the different contrasts between each separate color allows me to not have to have outlines around each shape. Oh, I've never um, thought about doing it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I've never, I didn't start checking my values like this until probably about a year or two ago. Um, yeah. but it's helped a lot. It Can also ask, helps. Is, is sorry, it sorry, something that, is it some, like, where did you pick it up? Did you just, like, thought about it? or? Oh, no. I, I mean, a, a lot of artists do it. Um, some artists yeah. actually oh, cool. start from black and white, and then they add color later. Uh, um, yeah. So they can, so they can see their values before they add color. Yeah. Um, but um, I personally can't really do that. That's really difficult for me because I, I just like to start out with color and then I'll just check my values as I go. Yeah. Um, uh, checking your values also is really helpful if you're trying to make something a focal point in your scene. Like for instance, if you want something to stand out, like here, actually I have a really good example of my draw this in your style here that we did for um, this episode if you fill it mm -hmm. with black and then change the blending mode of the layer down to color it will change it to black and white and oh. so since i checked my values on this illustration as i worked um i was able to make the skull if we zoom out a little bit here so we can see it from far away the skull mm -hmm. on the um, balloon is one of the brightest things in the scene besides the clouds. So your eye is naturally drawn to it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I wouldn't have been able to uh, tell what the brightest thing in the scene was without checking my values. Um, so yeah, it's really helpful. Yeah. I like to be able that. to see how dark and light everything is. Yeah. I was actually struggling with the different values of my clouds last night. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was I was really I was really using yours as a reference study. So that's cool to know how you went about it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks for yeah. sharing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and um, like for instance, see how we have um, we have a lot of contrast between the light clouds in the background and the dark silhouette of the balloon yeah. and the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's because we have like we have we checked our values so. Um, we can see how much contrast there is. So it's very easy to tell the silhouette against the clouds. So yeah, it helps things pop. Super cool. Nice. Yeah. Hi, Dorina. Welcome to the stream. So good to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome. Uh, Danielle says that value value trick is so helpful. I learned it in college. Oh, cool. Nice. Cool. <laughs> what are you working on right now, Christine? You you starting to add in the 
color characters. for the characters now. Yeah, it looks like yeah. It. I got bored with the clouds now. It's time to move on. <laughs> that sounds like me, just moving around all over the place. Okay, bored with this. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to learn a more efficient way to, to do things. <laughs> I think I think we all do. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? What are you gonna work on next? Um, I was going to add detail to the frog's clothing, but I think I'm going to start drawing in the stump here behind him instead. Yeah. Starting to work on the background, I guess. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of go with my gut on what I want to work on. Yeah. Uh, Annika says, uh, Kyle uh, Webster breaks it down really nicely in the brush hour streams. I recommend those. Yes, brush hour is really great. Um, and yes, just as Annika said, if you go to YouTube and search uh, brush hour, you'll you'll find it um, specifically on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. We have all of our replays for our live streams. And also, like if you scroll down on Behance, you can find them. Um, I don't remember what day of the week brush hour usually is. I I think it's on Monday. Um, I could be wrong mm. though, but there um, there are quite a few of them at this point. We've been running uh, that segment for a while now. Uh, but yeah, br uh, brush mm. hour. He just like kind of goes through all of his brushes and and uh, tests them out, so you can see uh, a bunch of different um, textures and stuff that you may want to try um, in all of his packs. So it's pretty cool. And very helpful too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's really helpful. Um I found um because uh like he might show a brush that you might not have thought of trying um mm -hmm. or you didn't even know was there because there's so many brushes to go through. Um yeah. and it just kind of um is a nice resource to be able to kind of uh break it down a little bit into smaller segments. When I find a brush, I just stick to one. So yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> Me too. <Yeah. laughs> I've been using this chalk brush for probably like um, two years now, I think. Wow. Yeah. Before that, I did mostly, I mostly used Kyle's watercolor brushes. Yeah, whenever I see like your piece, I always could tell that it's your work with the textures on it without mm -hmm. even seeing that you you did it so <laughs> yeah well that's cool that's really good yeah. to know you can always tell yeah i can usually always tell your work too um oh really <laughs> yeah mo specifically because of the colors that you use i don't see a lot of artists using the the green tones that you use a lot of the time um oh, so whenever oh. i see a piece like just in passing as I'm scrolling, I'm like, oh, that was Christine's. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it pops out a lot on my feed. Thank you. Yeah. It's always good to know that you're, you're doing something, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Teresa said, uh, I also tried making my own brushes and I love the process, even though it was tricky. I, I use them a lot lately. Nice. That's oh. a, well, it's a, probably a really, useful skill to be able to learn how to make your own brushes that's true <laughs> i've just never done it before speaking of color cody i was actually wondering if um how to get to the point where you are with your color palette <laughs> um <laughs> So I, I think I've talked about this a few times on stream. Um, so I, um, I just, I, my whole life, I've just really always loved uh, dark earth tones. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of natural for me to go that direction with my artwork. Um, but it took me a long time to get to this point of like yeah. having really dark colors. Um, because I, it, it was hard for me 
um, because I, I actually, before this palette that I'm using right now, that I've been using for the past year, um, I was using a much brighter, much more saturated palette. Um, and this palette I kind of discovered last year when I did my um, Drawtober list. Um, I kind of just really pushed myself to get like very, like really dark and moody with my colors. And I've been using the same colors ever since. Um, nice. So yeah, just kind of experimenting and just really pushing myself to get the, to the direction that I want my colors to go. Yeah. What about you? Um, yeah, I think I, I'm pretty much, on, I'm on the same, I was on the same journey too. Uh, I put the same challenge for myself for Peach Tober last year. Mm -hmm. Cause I found that um, prior that a lot of my works were a, a jumble of colors <laughs> that didn't really work on the feed. And um, so actually I started, I gave myself a challenge to stick with the primary colors for mm. Peach Tober. But then I found that I really hated using the blue tones or anything cool mm -hmm. so yeah so along the way I just started cutting out things that I didn't like things that I worked that worked well so and I found that I really like um early tones as well mm -hmm. do you wear a lot of earth tones in your wardrobe do you, um, <laughs> does your do your clothing <laughs> does your clothing look like your artwork or do you wear different clothing outside of your artwork colors of both I think <laughs> how about you I have a lot of earth tones in my in my wardrobe yeah <laughs> although I'm wearing pink today which yeah. is very different but um yeah most of my clothing is earth tones <laughs> nice Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you guys an example of experimenting with value here. Um, so I tried out this color from my color palette for the top part of this stump here, but I'm seeing that we're having an issue with value um, mm -hmm. right here on the log and the um, frog's hand. There isn't enough contrast here. Um, yep. Usually you can tell if there isn't enough contrast because it's the colors kind of like start to meld together and it's like your eyes start to like have this weird vibratey feeling when you're looking at both of the colors together so if we turn on the black and white we'll we can see that both of these colors are very similar in value um so very easy fix um all we have to do is just lock the transparency um on this layer here that's the top part of the stump so we go up to, at the top of the um, layer menu, we press the little uh, checkerboard icon that says lock. So we lock the transparency. So that allows us to be able to paint within the shape that we've already created without going outside of it. So what I can do now to be able to change the value is I'm just gonna lighten up my color and desaturate it a little bit. And then I'm just going to paint inside of this shape to make it a little bit lighter. So now we have a lot more contrast. I'm actually going to make it even a little bit, actually not that light, because now we're having issues with his pants too. So I might, maybe I can, maybe I should make it a little darker. I might do that. Maybe desaturate it a little bit more. But now we can see the frog's hand a little bit better against the top of the stump here. So that's the benefit of being able to check your values so you can make sure that you have the proper contrast with all your colors. Oh, made such a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sleeman says, uh, why is Cody and Christine using brown? Oh, uh, we both love brown. We just both love brown a lot. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, Dorinda says, lock transparency has always been hard for me to work out. Um, really interesting. What, what exactly do you have difficulty with? Um, I can, if you have a question, I can definitely try to, um, walk you through it. If I can, if I can answer it for you. Sometimes for my color palettes too, I'll open up old artwork and color drop, use the eyedropper to grab colors from old artwork too. Mm, yeah, that's a really good tool. Yeah, I did that um, a lot before I started saving my colors because um, it was just easier to be able to grab color palettes from my other artwork that I knew worked really well. Yeah. What color are you planning on making the hot air balloon? Um, do you want to take a guess? <laughs> it's my signature uh, color. <laughs> green? <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Do you normally get um, your pieces done within the stream, Cody, or? Uh, no, I usually take a long time. I'm, I'm a very slow artist. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam Peterson says, I basically use it when I don't want to create a mess but also don't want to edit something really quickly yeah i use um lock transparency specifically when i'm just like changing a color like that but i'll use a clipping mask if i want to add something on top without kind of like possibly ruining the layer underneath um so they basically work the same way um and i can walk you through walk you guys through it if you want to, to hear about how to create a clipping mask too if you're interested in that But yeah, I use lock transparency and clipping masks in like every single painting that I do. I love the little bear plushie that you're drawing. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make it um, as close to yours as possible. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so cute. Dorina says it's more of a tech, uh, it's more the technique of it. I paint something on one layer and then try to apply a new shade of color on a new layer above the lock transparency, but it doesn't work. I think, yeah, uh, Sam says you would need to work on the same layer. It only allows you to edit pixels where pixels exist already on that layer. Yeah. So I know you guys can't see my, um, my tools right now, but I can give you an example here off to the side. So if you wanted to do lock transparency, you need to create a shape first like this. Here's our little shape friend. Um, and then you go up to the top of the, the, layer panel and right next to the word lock there's like a little checkerboard icon and then you press it and now there's like a lock icon on your on your um layer so now you can go over top of that shape and it only paints where like sam said pic pixels already exist um so that's lock transparency if you wanted to paint on a separate layer but in that shape that would be a clipping mask so if we undid that and then if we create a layer above this shape, friend layer, and then hold alt, hold alt our option, and move your mouse in between the two layers until you see a little drop down arrow and then click. Again, I know you guys can't see it, but hopefully my explanations are um, clear enough. 
So layer on top, then move your mouse in between the two layers until you see a drop down arrow and then click. And now there, there should be like a little arrow on the left side of your uh, layer to indicate that it's a clipping mask. So now you can paint on a separate layer, but inside that shape. So now I'm on a separate layer, but still inside the shape, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so now I can turn this layer on and off and I can even actually move it around within the shape, but it's on a separate layer. So that's what a clipping mask does. Hopefully that was um, well explained enough. I know it's it's hard to <clears throat> it's hard to watch a tutorial and not be able to see the <laughs> see the tools, but um, yeah. So when do you in your coloring process? Um, when do you get to the point where you're painting on top of your sketch? Because I noticed your clouds are under the sketch, but your character is on top of the sketch. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, actually, mainly, good question. I always <laughs> draw over my sketches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think leaving, I guess for the background, it works. It allows me to see the different levels for the clouds and um, and just keep track where I left off because I don't think they're there yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? Do you normally just draw over your sketches a lot? or? Uh, yeah, I normally just draw straight over the sketch. Um, and if I need to see details underneath, I'll just lower the opacity of yeah. the layer over top of it so I can like see the details, like to draw on the detail lines and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, n I normally draw straight over my sketch. It's always cool seeing how others work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's really interesting. I, I really love seeing, um, the process of other artists. And I think that's, I think that's why I love streaming so much too. Yeah. Um, not only streaming myself, but watching other streams of artwork um, because everyone does things so differently. There's so many different ways to do the same thing in these painting programs. That's true. <laughs> I noticed as well that um, I didn't know that you work on your computer, which is pretty interesting to me because I've always worked on my iPad. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you always been drawing that way or do you just draw on your iPad? I think your mic fell down a little bit. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, so I um, have always, um, if you guys couldn't hear, I don't know if you could hear her, but she asked if I um, um, always drew on my computer or if I um, started on the iPad or anything like that. Um, so I just got my first iPad a year ago. Um, and I've been doing digital art for 10 years. So, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> so I have always had a Wacom Intuos. Um, this is my third Intuos, I think. Third, yeah, third. Um, I have an Intuos Pro Medium that's uh, that I'm working on right now. Um, that's my main tablet, really, besides my iPad now. Um, but I've always worked on a Wacom. What made you um, switch around, switch things around in terms of your tools? Um, I just uh, really wanted to be able to uh, work from laying on the couch. Uh, <laughs> all about the comfort. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Elodie says, I always have my sketch above everything on multiply at a very low opacity. Oh, multiply. Oh, that's interesting. And never thought about doing that before. L Elodie's full of the pro tips today. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I gotta give that a go. 
<laughs> so let's actually let's I'm gonna try that out right now. So if you have let's see the sketch so the sketch above everything and then have it on multiply. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, just sh oh very cool. Wonder. Oh yeah. Yeah, I always worry about um, having my sketch on top of everything because then, mm -hmm. because like I work with very blocky shapes, so I need to be able to see the edge of my shape really well. So I yeah. guess that's why I paint over top of my sketch um, yeah. <laughs> because having the sketch on top, it, it's so rough um, and I, mm -hmm. it's so difficult for me to see the, the shape underneath <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just with the way that I personally work. Have you um, have you always been interested in artwork, or is it something that you kind of just recently got into? Have you always kind of been interested in creative things? Um, I've always yeah, I've always loved like being a creative since young. Yeah, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind um, of other things did you do when you were a kid, like creative stuff? So I've always I've always been drawn to traditional stuff or. I guess I was only exposed to that kind of medium, mm -hmm. which also led me to, like, I majored in fine arts as well back in uni. So there was also a lot of traditional, like, mediums that you play around with. And only when, like, the iPad started coming out with apps like Procreate or Fresco, where I was really exposed to digital painting. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Cody? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, my mom and I did a lot of crafts and stuff when I was growing up. Um, cool. A lot of sewing and that kind of thing. Um, I, when I was growing up, I pretty much just did like some pencil drawings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I got into digital illustration um, after I graduated high school, I think was when I got my first Wacom tablet. <clears throat> Ooh. It took me a long time to be able to figure out how to draw in Photoshop. I was at a loss for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. It was very difficult at first. Well, you're ahead of me for sure. I'm not sure how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you can do Fresco and Procreate, uh, Photoshop will be really easy. The, the, oh yeah, that's actually part of why I I was drawn to Fresco when I got my iPad because the yeah. the interface is very similar um, in Fresco and Photoshop. So it's like if you're used to certain tools in Fresco, you'll know mm -hmm. where to find them in Photoshop. It's a little different, obviously, but because it's not a mobile app, but um, it's Ooh. it's easy to transition between the two. I I think. So I have a question for chat, everyone in chat. Um, so on, um, let's see, Chris, here we go. Christine's original painting, um, she has both of the scarves as red and I did the frog scarf as red, but I want to ask you guys your opinion. I want you guys to, um, get some input on my art here and give me give me some suggestions for the color uh to make um the boy characters um bandana so if you guys could some, put some suggestions in chat we'll start um testing out some new colors i think that that would be a lot of fun to get some input from chat Ooh. <laughs> i'd love to see what they'll suggest <laughs> Yeah, we did. Um, we did some fun suggestions last time. So this is the uh, draw this in your style that I did with Reagan, our last episode. 
Um, and chat suggested um, adding in this teal color um, for this color palette. And I think it looked out, it worked out really cool. I like, I really oh, cool. like the final result. Yeah. Um, so I love, I love getting um, some input from the viewers because, <clears throat> um, because it's kind of like just working with a big think tank, you know, just like working That's with, true. A, yeah, working with a big team at one time, you know, a like hundred that. brains are better than one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Rin says blue. Dorina says blue or purple. Um, Elodie says, I think it would be cute to have them match. So red from Elodie. Um, Annika says same color, but patterned. Oh, very interesting. What pattern, Annika? If you, if you guys had to choose a pattern, what pattern? Like polka dots or like paisley maybe? Or, mm. oh, interesting. Stripies. <laughs> Stripes. <laughs> <laughs> I love stripes too. I put I put stripes in my work a lot. Same with plaid too. <laughs> uh, Danielle says I would say red because they're in the same troop, but blue could be cute too. Maybe one is a different troop level. Yeah, for sure. That Ooh, would be cute. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> They could be competitors. <laughs> um, Sleeman says, uh, Cody, is there a difference between white and black nibs of your Wacom pen? I'm using both and I don't see a difference. I'm pretty sure the white ones are softer than the black ones. I'm, I, I've only ever used the black ones. I actually don't hardly ever change out my nib. <laughs> I think I've had this tablet for like, uh two years now and i've never changed out this nib once before so um yeah i i'm i i only ever use the black ones um and that's I'm, I'm i'm feeling it right now it feels like a pretty hard plastic and i'm i'm pretty sure if i remember right the the white one is kind of like softer plastic like a like a matte soft touch plastic i could be wrong Maybe Sam, do you do you have an answer to that question? I, I really am not sure off the top of my head and I don't have the other nibs on hand right now. <laughs> uh, Dorina says a leaves pattern for the uh, bandana and Annika says plaid very fall. Oh, okay. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could be really cute. Uh, I might do, I'm thinking plaid might be cute and we'll try out a, a couple of different colors and see what we like here Oh man, you know what? I totally just lost track of time this whole time, you guys. I am totally admitting it right now. I lost track of time and <laughs> it is oh, almost no. time to go. So oh, I am, <laughs> I know it's, it goes by so fast. Our streams go by so fast, you guys. And I'm, we're just like having fun and hanging out. And oh my goodness, I didn't even get to do the bandana on stream man i'm going to try out some colors off stream and uh figure that out but before we go i really want to show off some of the entries that have been um posted online for um our for our theme and the theme beforehand um before we go this last few minutes so i'm going to go ahead and tab over here to instagram and pop on over um, to our hashtag here. So that again, if you guys would like to um, post your work, just do it with hashtag Adobe Live DTIYS, or you can post it on the Photoshop Discord in the Draw This In Your Style channel. Um, but we had some really cute entries. Oh my goodness, I love this one so much. <laughs> I know yeah. you saw this one. You saw this one this morning, I think. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. They added a little, a little puppy. <laughs> I know. 
It's so cute. And look at their matching glasses too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. I just love the colors that they chose too. And so much textures as well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't even notice um, looking at it on the phone, but um, seeing it on the big on the desktop here, they have like little stars and stuff in the sky in the background. It's so cute. Good job, Emmy. Thank you so much for uh, sending in your work. <laughs> and we also, I just wanted to show off, um, let's see, I can't, oh, this is the top post. For some reason, Instagram won't let me see um, previous like recent posts on here but um oh, really we have this yeah we have this really cool really great entry um this person has a few entries for draw this in your style um but yeah i i really love um all of your guys's entries if you want to see them um go ahead and uh check out the hashtag on instagram you can see the more recent stuff um for some reason it's only letting me see the top posts but so sorry i lost track of time you guys we would have been able to look at more entries but sadly have to go now um thank you so much christine for uh spending time with us today and um don't forget to follow christine on instagram as well and check out her store for prints and stuff like that um it's just at the daily christine and um yeah thank you all so much for hanging out with us today uh thanks for joining christine it was fun <laughs> thank you for having me thanks for having me guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course um and don't forget to register for max and all that stuff because that is coming up soon Ooh, yeah yes, so excited <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so thank you all so much for watching and we will see you guys tomorrow on adobe live hope you all have a wonderful evening bye, bye.